You have to work today? Yep. <laughs> well, it's a good thing I brought plenty of makeup wipes. <laughs> Who knows? The patrons might enjoy me walking around. Yeah, just... <laughs> walking around the comic section as he puts the Joker back on the shelf. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Books and Looks. My name is Kathy, as you guys already know. And we have a new face on today's episode. We have Tyler. I'm going to let him introduce himself and tell you a little bit about what he does here at the library, what he's gonna be talking about. And in the meantime, I'm going to get started with his um, very interesting look. So hello everybody, my name is Tyler Philo. I am a shelver here at the city of Baytown, Sterling Municipal Library. I, uh, I basically am the one that puts the books back on, back on the shelf when you turn them in. Y'all do much, so much more than just put the <laughs> books back on the shelf. We do a lot of cleaning. A they lot check of, them in too. Yeah, we check them in, yeah. Very technical stuff. Yeah. Um, today I'm gonna be reviewing uh, Batman the Killing Joke, which is all about Joker and his origin story and uh, pretty amazing stuff. It's by Alan Moore, who is probably one of the greatest uh, comic book writers of all time behind Stan Lee and others. But uh, he is definitely one of the, the best, he's probably the best in uh, DC Universe, which is Detective Comics. Yeah. Are you um, more of a DC person or a Marvel person? I know that's a I'm gonna tough be, question. <laughs> I'm gonna be brutally honest. I'm a, I'm a Marvel person myself. Okay. But my, uh, my best friend, Reese, he, is DC through and through, and Batman is, is his just bread and butter. Like, he does it all the time. So I always like to, I like to read the other side, and especially because Batman is just amazing. And, you know, not so humble opinion, he's kind of like the whole reason DC exists. Right. Right. <laughs> so, but this is, you know, the, the origin story of Batman's villain, the Joker. Oh, hence why um, we are making Tyler look kind of crazy. And that's because we are actually doing a Joker inspired look or attempting because um, I don't think I've ever done a Joker inspired look. So we'll see how, how this goes. But um, in honor of his Joker book review, we're going to, we're going to try that. So it's his origin story. Can you tell us a little bit about where this origin story begins, whether it's childhood, and then you can kind of go from there without giving away too many spoilers. Right. So uh, Joker, originally he is just a normal person. He doesn't start out crazy. He is average, average everyday human being, uh, but he is a he's a comedian. Okay. Or at least he tries to be he ends up being a failed one. So him and his wife, he's probably... He's married. Yeah, he's probably in his late later 20s. So he and his wife, they were poor and destitute. He was, his uh, comedy career isn't really going anywhere. He used to work at Ace Chemicals, which is a very toxic work environment, <laughs> considering it's a chemical plant in Gotham. Was his wife supportive of his um, comedic journey? She was. She was supportive to like every definition of the word. She like, she bent over backwards for him, kept trying. But in the end here, we've kind of, we come in at it's kind of the last straw sort of thing. She, okay. There's nothing left for this. So this Joker, is there like any, like which actor would you say depicts the comic books? the best in terms of the movies that have come out? Um, eh. As for the depicting the comics, it really kind of, guess it would fall on Jack Nicholson. Okay. I guess he's, he's kind of the most comic accurate in my opinion. But uh, as for the best, typically it's kind of like a hands down Heath Ledger. But okay. 
he's, he's actually, he was so good that they started writing comics based off his Joker. Oh. <laughs> Not rarely can you do that. So back to your version um, in in the comic. So his comedic route doesn't really doesn't really go well. So it's at its it's at its last straw. They are they are going. Their house is about to be evicted. A really bad situation. So he's kind of drowning his sorrows away in a nearby uh, pub, and these two men approach him with an offer for him to do this simple job for them and they'll get him the money he needs so that he can support his family. And uh, finds out that they want him to portray one of Batman's original villains, which was the, the Red Hood, which is a criminal mastermind that really is, uh, he was very, very popular in the really, really old comics as being Batman's number one arch nemesis. Okay. But um, we would later find out he's he's just a whole bunch of different people that each wear a red hood. Oh. So that was kind of like the job of these people. They would get other people to kind of go and impersonate them yeah. wearing a red hood. So if you do a little background look, you, you'll find out that the person who's making, giving him the job was the original red hood. He's the oh. guy who's who played it and made the character basically, but uh, he hands it off to him. They go, they do this job at Ace Chemicals and they approach him, of course, because he used to work for Ace Chemicals. Okay. So he knows the layout and all that. He's their inside man. Right. So they break in, they're doing their stuff and Batman shows up and of course he He's not ready to be a supervillain. He doesn't want to be, he just wants right. to feed his family. That's really where he starts freaking out. Cause that's, that. it's holy, holy crap, it's Batman. <laughs> I'm not ready for this. But he understood that, you know, that he understood that the task was kind of like against Batman, correct? Yeah, he understood that Batman would be there. Okay. But he, they were, they always told him that they would take care of him. Basically, okay. they, they were gonna take care of Batman, mm -hmm. so he could run away. Instead, those two bolt on him. They leave him to be the fall guy, oh. and uh, Batman chases him up above this this chemical runoff. It's just chemicals and sewage and all the scary stuff is all mixing together right outside the factory and uh, he's on a ledge and Batman goes to goes to take him down in true Batman fashion and sort of in a way it's an accident but he he falls over the railing and lands in this just this scary chemical sludge okay and he wakes up there hours later He's just burning. He's just in so much pain. And when he pops off the red hood, he's he looks the way Joker looks. He's the chemicals have altered him. They've okay. Really messed him up. <laughs> in this book, is you know, do you see? Does it make you see Joker as the villain, or does it make you? Did it make you more so sympathize for his situation? In the beginning, you really, you understand where he comes from and that it does, it does point to him being kind of the victim of the situation. Right. And he goes through at one point and he kind of blames Batman okay. for, for what happened. And so in some, some ways you can, you can kind of say, you can make the argument that it was Batman's fault. He got, kind of did. That he became the Joker. Yeah. But um, then he becomes so like obsessed with Batman because he blames him that everything in his life sort of is shaped around being the same and yet the antithesis of Batman, same and opposite. So it kind of, it goes to a weird 
obsession that you just kind of, you can't justify. And at that point, it's like, yeah, he's the Joker. He is beyond, beyond saving. But the, also, Batman has this obsession too with saving the Joker. So how many um, volumes are in this storyline alone for this comic? Well, uh, I would say about three, maybe three to five. Three to five? Okay. Yeah. Have you read any other comics by this author or is the, um, the Joker series the only one that you've read from them? Uh, from Alan Moore? He has uh, he has the Watchmen, which was is a pretty dark uh, another dark uh, series. He also has V for Vendetta, which I think is in that same universe, but I don't quite know. Very cool. Okay, look straight for me. <laughs> okay, look all the way up for me, like with your with your eyeballs, like. Open your eyes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then look up. There we go. So are comics what you usually read? Is that what you tend to kind of gravitate towards? Or what do you usually tend to pick up? I um I do I do read quite a quite a few comics, uh, but I would say the most that I read are probably sci-fi. Sci-fi, okay. Who is your favorite sci-fi author? Ooh, that's a, uh, well, in our section, we include fantasy into it, so, uh, J.R.R. Tolkien, that takes the cake, but, um, as for just your actual sci-fi fantasy type stuff, um, I typically, I, I stick to the Star Wars section, those are written by so many people, it's kind of like going to the comic section, they just, there's so many. <laughs> On a Marvel end, what do you tend to gravitate towards? Oh my gosh, I love Ghost Rider. He is my number one for Marvel. Uh, but I also read Iron Man and The Avengers. So I think what I'm going to incorporate now is I have some Heath eyes going on, some Joaquin lips and eyebrows going on. I'm going to incorporate another Joaquin Joker into the mix. And I'm going to do um, the iconic blue triangles, except I think I'm just going to do the bottom one so yeah this is just gonna be one big mess <laughs> if you need joker just pick and choose yes we're gonna cover everything but i definitely i definitely picked up this book because uh it was a very joker centric one typically you can't find joker comics you'll find batman comics with joker in it uh this one was very much a, a Joker comic with Batman in Just it. Just focus on Joker. Yeah. Which I really liked. It was, it was kind of fresh. It was a little changed. Interesting. Yeah. So what are you currently reading? Currently I am reading uh, Educated. Uh, I can't remember who it's over. <laughs> who it's by, but uh, it's a memoir. Okay. That um, I think Sabrina gave me. Oh, see. we'll see. We'll see. Uh, it's pretty interesting. And then, of course, I'm reading the, the Judge Dredd comics. Okay. Okay, Tyler. I've tried to make this as messy and different Joker-like as possible. Um, it just, it looks messy. It looks crazy. But you know what? It still very much gives me that kind of Joker vibe. Like... I'm, I'm satisfied with this look. I feel like when he smiles, it gives that stretched kind of look, which is what I was going for. I'm proud of myself. I'm giving myself, <laughs> I'm giving myself a thumbs up to this look, and I'm also giving a thumbs up to you for coming and talking about... Batman, the killing joke. Yeah, super cool to hear about this, and I think it's super cool that um, it's kind of told from the Joker's perspective that you get to see a little bit more of his insider job. So if you're a comic book fan or um, just a Batman fan, then I definitely recommend picking this up. I'm recommending it now from Tyler <laughs> just raving and raving and talking about it, but it is available to check out here at the library um, as soon as Tyler goes and puts it back on the shelf, shelver. I might. <laughs> I'm kidding.
Thank you guys so much for watching and thank you Tyler for coming and allowing us to do this crazy mess on your face. Um, I hope that you love it and I hope that you guys enjoyed watching this and we will see you on the next Books and Looks episode. Bye.